we are talking the appearance. This is a medieval fantasy horror movie hybrid written and directed by Kurt Knight. I feel the kind of most obvious film to compare this to is Sean Connery's mid-80s movie The Name of the Rose, of which this movie does actually have a very similar plot. But I'd also throw in there a little bit of uh, Nicolas Cage's Season of the Witch as well. Now the plot here focuses on two um, inquisitors. Now they have been summoned to visit this remote abbey where there has been a murder of a priest under kind of mysterious circumstances and there is a young girl being held in, on suspicion of being a witch. They believe that she is the cause of all the disruption and uh, misery that is foreset this kind of uh, this small community. When the inquisitors turn up they are greeted with some hostility from the abbot and various clergymen within this kind of abbey and they begin their investigation and ultimately the actual inquisitors are actually somewhat sympathetic to this young girl and one of them, the, our kind of main character, actually believes she's actually innocent and, and tries to kind of go about proving that she is so by ultimately suggesting that uh, this kind of community's fear and paranoia has ultimately led them to jump to conclusions and, and kind of really go for exaggerated uh, reasons why things have happened. Now, as the kind of the movie progresses, uh, obviously things maybe uh, are not always they seem. Uh, is this woman really a witch? Is there something else going on? Are the kind of monks just being kind of paranoid? You have to watch the movie to find out. So let's discuss the appearance. What works with this movie, first of all? Okay, so number one, this is a relatively lower budget movie, but I've got to say, I was so impressed with the production value here. This movie looks just as good as the other two movies that I have mentioned that all had a bit more of kind of a higher profile, you know, star and budget towards them. But I've got to say, everything from the set design, the location, the costuming, uh, all looks absolutely fantastic. And even on, on a technical level as well, I've got to say, I was really impressed with the cinematography, I thought the lighting, uh, the kind of like the um, the sound design, all that was absolutely fantastic. The movie's got a great score, haunting and kind of creepy at the kind of the same time. Oh, cast do a good job here. There's no kind of duff acting here as well, and it's interesting because you, you'll notice there's a couple of familiar faces here if you're familiar with. Uh, the fantasy genre especially, you've got um, a couple of people from who have been in like, the Arrow Storm Entertainment uh, fantasy films, like Adam Johnson for example, um, and they're normally kind of crampy and kind of um, a bit more like, you know, Xena and Hercules Warrior, um, you know, those type of things. But here everyone plays it dead straight. Uh, you've also got Christian Narin from Game of Thrones. So there are a few familiar faces here if you are familiar with the kind of fantasy genre, so to speak. They all do an excellent job. The effects um, do uh, are, are minimal, but I feel they're effective when they are here, uh, and there's uh, you know a good use of kind of uh, just the app, using the atmosphere, using the kind of the ambient light and uh, sound effects stuff that to create these kind of creepy things. But there are elements here where we will see kind of uh, you know strange things kind of happening on scene, or at least they appear to be. The movie also does try to draw parallels to problems within our modern society as well. And I'll, I won't give it away because it will kind of give some spoilers, but suffice to say, this movie does use, um, you know, some kind of like metaphors, shall we say, for things that are representative of problems that we may have today in our world. So what doesn't work? The big one for me, the running time. The running time of this movie is far too long. Um, this could do easily a 20 minutes to 25 minutes cut out of it and it will benefit the movie so much because the movie is far too long for its own good and quite frankly the movie doesn't have enough plot to sustain this length of running time because it does kind of like run out of steam about halfway through and you kind of just feel like you're kind of treading water and kind of you're getting more of the same and uh, yeah 20 to 25 minutes to be cut out of this movie and this movie would benefit so much through that I feel. Uh, second thing is, I gotta say, um, I disag <clears throat> I maybe disagreed with the uh, some of the plot decisions in this movie and the kind of the way certain characters are written. For example, I mean, our protagonist is one of these in these uh, uh, inquisitors, and he believes that this girl is innocent, but you don't really know why. I mean. He, there's no real reason for him to just automatically assume that. Um, you know, we, we understand he's a younger Inquisitor and may have, you know, a, somewhat of a kind of a past. But nonetheless, um, there are 
there are evidence to, to, to suggest more so that she is a, um, a potentially a witch than there isn't, if that makes sense. And even when she's directly kind of like challenged about it, she's all acting shady and stuff like that. It's just an irritating that he was seen. I mean, as a, obviously watching it in, in modern times, you think, oh, come on, you know, accusing witches, of, witches were silly. But in the context of this of this film and this kind of like this time period, uh, I felt there was no real reason for him to just assume she was innocent, if that makes sense. But there was certainly evidence to prove that she wasn't. And then I guess the other thing I would say is um, the inclusion of Christian Narin uh, is completely superficial. Uh, he's clearly there just to kind of have a Game of Thrones connection. But his character could literally be taken out of the film and, were, and it would literally make no difference to the plot whatsoever. His character is completely superfluous to need, doesn't serve any function, he doesn't actually do anything in the movie apart from follow the other Inquisitor around. So, um, although, you know, he's not, a, he's not a bad performance necessarily, his character is completely irrelevant to the actual plot. But overall, it's a very well-made kind of like horror, um, fantasy kind of medieval hybrid. Uh, it's it's slow, I, I feel, um, and that may people put people off, but it's well made, and I, and I feel if you you can have the patience and you like a slow burn and you like kind of like uh, you know f the light fantasy kind of uh, well I, I say light it's all pretty depressing in this film, but it's kind of like there's not masses of fantasy elements in it, but nonetheless it's a kind of like a medieval kind of setting, kind of like Vikings and probably Game of Thrones, but without the kind of like the uh, uh, big shebangs and all of that. It's worth a watch, I, I would say. I think there's that, that, that actual quality here is very high. Uh, it's high quality filmmaking, high quality acting, production value. Script maybe a little, had a little bit more work, I feel, and could have been cut down. Uh, but overall, it's, it's, it's worth, I would say it's worth a look if you are, that sounds interesting to you. If you need a lot of kind of visual stimulus, then you may want something else, but I'll give it a seven out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me comments, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.